So if you're familiar with me and my work or my channel, you're probably very familiar with the fact that I love handheld filmmaking and that it's pretty much the way I've built my career, my cinematography style on over the last three or four years. I even went as far as making a YouTube video here basically talking about why I hate gimbals and why I avoid using them at all costs. And honestly, that was one of my most successful videos to date. So I wanted to make a follow up on that video and instead of trashing on gimbals or other forms of stabilization, I actually wanted to give you guys some advice and tips on how to get better handheld footage because I truly love shooting videos this way and hopefully with this advice you guys are going to be able to improve your handheld game a lot more if that's something you want to try out over using you know a tripod a monopod or a gimbal in your work what's going on guys Juan back here again with a new video hope you guys are all doing well and as always very excited to be here with you guys to talk about more sports creative content if you guys are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Juan. I am a 25 year old sports content creator living in Toronto, Ontario, and I work full time in the sports industry and I make these videos to help you guys on your own sport creative journeys. So these are just going to be a few of my favorite tips and pieces of advice on how to get rid of those micro jitters and small shakes in your footage. But please keep in mind that you are not going to be able to get rid of all the shake and all the jitters when shooting handheld. I think the movement, the slight shake you get here and there in your footage is just it comes with the territory of having your camera in your hands. If you guys want that smooth cinematic gimbal style footage, it's going to be really hard to replicate that handheld. I would recommend just getting a gimbal. If you guys want a way to get really still scenic shots of an arena or a stadium, where are you without any camera shake whatsoever? Get a tripod, get a monopod. The handheld look is really unique and it's not for everyone. I'll acknowledge that. And that's okay. It's just something I really enjoy. And a lot of people have asked me how I get really stable handheld footage. So this is what this video is about today to give you guys the advice on how to improve your handheld footage game and just to get right into it we're going to go in with tip number one which is probably the most important one is invest in a top handle I'm just gonna rip the bandaid off. Having a top handle has been a game changer for me in every single way when it comes to handheld cinematography. Ever since I got it, I noticed an immediate difference in the look and feel of my handheld footage, and I've never looked back. Even though, yeah, you're gonna have to spend some money, I think just an investment like this, and they're not really that expensive, will make a big difference on how your handheld footage looks. And for this, purpose let's pretend that i actually have a camera attached here i just don't have a cage on any other camera that works with this top handle so for the time being let's just pretend there's a camera attached to this top handle first off i think holding a camera with the top handle is much more ergonomic a lot more comfortable for me you know i usually will have my camera in and around my hip or my you know upper core and shooting that way but the main thing about the top handle is that you're actually using gravity to your advantage if this top handle was attached to the camera a lot of that weight and that pressure is coming on the handle. I would normally hold my camera like this with one hand on the bottom, one hand on the lens, and the majority of the weight on top. I'm not really pulling the camera down. I'm just cradling the camera with my hands while the top handle takes most of the weight. And what that does is that gives you that kind of authentic and natural and less jerky camera sway that you see in a lot of documentaries, that you see in a lot of footage that's handheld versus you know having the jittery kind of shaking look that you'll have otherwise. Using gravity is a really good way Way that a top handle allows you to stabilize your footage naturally taking away a lot of those micro jitters like i said you're not going to be taking away all of the movement but it's a much more natural looking sway versus a shaky look that we want to avoid now these guys are actually relatively not that expensive i'm pretty sure you can get most of them anywhere from like 50 to like 70 dollars for the most part and then you can get some for even a hundred dollars i have like a really nice wooden small rig one on my camera right now i will leave a bunch of links down in the description below it really just depends on what you want some of them have more attachment points some of them are different materials take a look get the one that you can afford or one that you like believe me buying one of these even just one of them has made a huge difference in my handheld footage and i think you'll notice the results really really quickly once you start using them a side handle also a great addition you can consider that as well i love using a wooden side handle on my camera rig i use that and the top handle interchangeably depending on the situation and i find both are really good ways of you know getting rid of that shake and giving it more of a natural handheld look it just really depends on what you want your rig to look like and what setup you have for the most part if you can only afford one i would go with a top handle every single day this thing has been a game changer for me handheld tip number two keep the camera closer to your body so typically when people are just starting off and i'm a victim of this too we all typically hold our cameras like this and this presents two problems number one there's a lot of distance here between your camera and your body and number two you are using your arms to hold your camera up at eye level you can do two really easy things here to improve your handheld filmmaking without buying any accessories or any attachments number one pulling it close to your body and number two bring it lower closer to your core midriff area and just by doing those two things you're going to see a big difference even if you don't want to buy a top handle even if you don't have image stabilization on 
Just keeping it close and low to your body is a big, big thing you can do to improve right away. Now you're probably asking yourself, what's wrong with holding your camera like this? And in essence, nothing. However, by holding your camera so high and so far away from your body, you're gonna get tired. Your arms are gonna get exhausted really quickly. And even though cameras are getting smaller and lighter, it is really hard to keep your arms up like this for a significant amount of time. And your arms are gonna start to shake and that's gonna transfer over to your camera footage and it's gonna look with all those jitters and get really shaky. And we wanna avoid that. So instead, by pulling your camera in closer to your body and bringing it lower, closer to your core, you're now using more of your upper body muscles, not just your arms, but more of your core, more of your chest as a stabilizing mechanism here. And you're not gonna get tired as quick, which means you're not gonna have any of those micro vibrations from exhaustion getting its way into your camera and therefore affecting your footage. Another benefit is by keeping your camera close to your body, you're gonna automatically get smoother movements if you don't wanna get a static shot. Whether that's a pan or like a pull in or a push out, whatever you're kind of doing with your body, the camera is gonna follow and look a lot smoother than if you were sticking your arms out. Again, all you really need to do, if you don't wanna buy anything, keep it close to your body, keep it low. Whether it's a static shot, whether there's movement there, you're gonna notice a big, big difference by keeping it in and close to your body. Handheld tip number three, add weight to your camera body. Apart from using a top handle, adding weight to a camera is a really good way of utilizing gravity in the same way that a top handle does in order to stabilize your footage. The lighter and smaller a camera is, the more prone it is to being affected by those micro jitters and shakes. The heavier a camera rig is, the more it can absorb all that and kind of negate it when you're shooting it. So even though cameras are getting smaller and lighter almost every single year, that's not always a good thing if you wanna get more stable footage. Don't be afraid to buy some accessories and throw some weight on this thing to really allow gravity to be a natural stabilizing force for it. You can add weight to your camera in several different ways. And for me, it's just been rigging out my a7S III over the last few years that has done just that. My camera is currently in cage right now with a top and a side handle, which gives me more grip options. I have a microphone on my camera. I have a monitor on my camera. I have a 360 camera on the side at times for BTS. And I will very soon be getting V-mount batteries to externally power my camera. All of these things not only give you their individual benefits, but also put more weight on the camera in general. And just by adding the slightest bit of weight, even from one or two of those accessories, you're gonna be able to use gravity a lot more as a stabilizing force using that top handle, using that grip I showed you earlier. So consider adding accessories in the future when you wanna improve some of your handheld game by making your camera just a little bit heavier. Handheld tip number four, keep your focal lengths top of mind. Depending on your lens or focal length, you can get drastically different results at both ends of the spectrum, whether you're shooting wide or really tight in, can make a really big difference on how your footage looks. If you're shooting towards the wider end of the spectrum, say you're shooting anywhere from like 16 to like 20, millimeters, it's going to be a lot more forgiving. You're going to get a lot less shake and a lot more sway when you're shooting wide versus if you're shooting in a lot tighter, every movement you make when using a telephoto lens in this situation is going to be multiplied by 10. The smallest shake or the smallest movement is going to be much more noticeable when you're shooting at a tighter focal length. Now that's not to say you can't shoot at a longer focal length when you are handheld. I do it all the time with my 70 to 200 on my camera, but you just need to keep in mind that everything you do, every single little movement you make when you're zoomed in, I would say past 70 millimeters is going to be amplified a lot more. So you just need to be more calculated and slower with your movements when you are shooting at those longer focal lengths. But I think by combining that with a top handle, and especially for me, pulling it close to my body, if I'm ever shooting past 70 millimeters, the best results I get are bringing it real close to my body. But focal length, keep that in mind every time you're shooting handheld for different results. Last thing I'm going to say is that in order to really appreciate and enjoy handheld filmmaking, you have to understand and accept the limitations that come with this style of filmmaking. Everything has its limitations. And when you learn to accept them and adopt that into your style, you're gonna find that this is a very unique and fun way of shooting, not just sports, but anything you wanna create. There are certain things you can't do with this style. If you're looking to do really smooth, handheld walking shots, kind of tracking or following a subject, Without a gimbal, you're gonna be disappointed because this isn't what you're supposed to use. If you want that kind of shot, I would recommend using a gimbal for it. And I think for me, part of accepting the limitations is actually embracing the raw vibe that I get from shooting handheld. I get much more of a raw, authentic look that I enjoy, slight camera shakes. It feels like you're there versus when you're shooting with the gimbal, I think it kind of takes you out of the moment because it's so smooth and so precise. Again, if you're looking for that shot, use the gimbal. I'm not telling you not to, but all I'm saying is that there are certain benefits of using this that at first might be drawbacks. The slight, slight camera shake for me raw, authentic, real. It brings your viewer in. That's why I do it. 
when you start to embrace those imperfections in handheld footage is when you're gonna start appreciating this style a lot more. As a filmmaker, I've really embraced handheld shooting as my main form of cinematography, whether it's sports, whether it's anything else. Handheld is the way I like to go, but certain situations call for certain tools and styles, so just remember to be adaptable. Just because I shoot everything in handheld doesn't mean you need to. It also doesn't mean it fits every single scenario. If I'm shooting an interview or a scenic or anything that requires very little movement, I'm gonna pull out a tripod. If I'm shooting something where I'm following a subject or I need extra movement or I'm walking with my camera and I want as least shake as possible, I'm gonna get a gimbal. Each tool, each style has its use in each of its different scenarios and you need to be able to adapt and recognize that. However, I truly do love handheld filmmaking and I use it as much as I can because I love the look it gives me. To close all that out, I hope you guys got some tips, some advice that you guys can use in your handheld filmmaking. It is a lot of fun and I hope that these tips help you guys improve the stability and the quality of your footage. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please make sure to give it a like down below. Leave any comments with any questions you have below about the accessories I talked about, about stabilizing footage, about handheld shooting. I'm happy to answer them down below. And also, if you're new here or if you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe as I would really, really appreciate it and would help the channel grow a ton. And that is it from me in this video. I hope you guys enjoy it and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.